Welcome back to Life Insurance Today. I'm your guide, Edward Pritchett, joined by Mr. Joe Jordan. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit today, Joe, about just this idea of the aging population that we're, we're seeing. You know, people are getting older in general, right? And there's a large group of people that are, are getting to the, uh, a certain age, you know, retirement age or, or so have you. But then there's also an aging population within the insurance agent force, right? Uh, so talk to our, our audience about that and, and what's needed uh, for our industry right now and, and what opportunities it presents for life insurance agents in this day and age. Well, as I said before, the, the, you know, the business used to be all about dying too soon. Now, now it's actually living too long, you know? I mean, you had somebody who retired at 65, the dead at 68, you know, mm. who cares, you know? But this is something that's global, okay? To me, this is, the, this is the, the defining issue of the 21st century. I don't think it's a lot of the other things that you hear about. I think it's this one, because this is something you can do something about. Mm -hmm. That's the idea of living a significant life, you know? By, by 2050, there'll be, uh, there'll be three, two billion people on the planet over the age of 60. Five countries with over 50 million people over the age of 60. China, India, United States, Indonesia, and Brazil. China has 30 million bachelors. 30 million bachelors. And why? What did they do? They went to this one-child policy. And so then what happened is you don't have to use your imagination to figure out why there's such an imbalance. What are they going to do with that? You know, demographics is the future that can't be changed. Mm -hmm. The other thing is what country... What country has the greatest number of people over age 100? What do you think? Which, which, what country do you think it is? I'm going to go with uh, Japan. Japan has the highest per capita. Okay. But the United States, which hmm. has 90, 94,000 people over the age of 100, which is almost double China, despite the fact that China has three times the size of the population. That's a tribute to our health care system and, and okay. the way we take care of people. The other issue with that is, by the way, from a gender perspective, what do you think the ratio of women to men is on over 100? At least three to one. It's five to one. <laughs> five to one. So, so here's the thing. The, the other side of the coin is on life insurance, 80% of men die married, 80% of women die single. Mm. So this is a huge perspective. It's a huge obligation that we have is to make certain that people know. This, this is... This is a women, a woman's issue. So, you know, this is something that we really have to begin to take into consideration and to understand. I want everyone to understand that you in this business are taking care of the biggest issue that humanity faces. Mm. And that is the idea of people living a lot longer because yeah. those risks happen. So it used to be a, a live, a die too soon. Now it's the idea of being able to take care of people to live too long. Yeah. And it's it's amazing the 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 changes that the insurance industry has had, right? Like it's not just about a death benefit. Now there are all these additional things, the riders that are added on right. to our traditional policies so that you have potential for long-term care, you have critical illness, right. chronic illness, you have accelerated death benefits for various things. And agents need to be more aware right. that that's available, right? And then be able to talk to their clients with that understanding that, guess what? We're talking to someone who's 40, 50, 60, they may only have, they still have half their life left to live right. where a lot of things can happen. What would you say to agents as far as just the age of the average insurance agent these days? I mean, what, what, what do we see in there and, and, and what can we do to make some changes when it comes to that, the average age of a life insurance agent? I mean, it's in the late 50s, so, you know, figure it out. You know, how much longer do you have? I, that's why we really have to make it appealing. We have to make this business appealing towards getting younger people into the business. I mean, mm -hmm. they espouse the idea that they want to do something significant for society. There's no greater thing than in terms of, of, of what we do. We also have to be more diverse, all right, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, both from a gender pers pers perspective, you know, and, and also, you know, the racially we have to do that. And the other thing that I think we need to do, which the business has to do, and, and that's why I admire some, a lot of the stuff you do, um, we got to not only talk to the wealthy people, we got to talk to people who may never be rich, but they don't deserve to be poor. Mm. And those are the people that need it most. Those are the people that can recover. Those are the people that are, that are, that are really out there that, have, uh, that are exposed. 
So uh, I think we have to advertise. That's why I talked about the culture changing. This is a mind-blowing business when you think about it in terms of your impact on others. And if I think you put that in front of you, it helps to solve a lot of the other issues that you deal with. Notwithstanding that you're in your own business and you, you can do your own thing, but it's the idea that well, let's, let me think back and think about the significant impact I can have on others. Definitely. Well, hopefully these words will help you realize that you may want to look into this idea of the aging population not only the aging population in the client base that you work with, but also in the agents around you. And how can we together solve these issues? I got one more issue for you, if you don't mind. Quickly. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. All right. When Social Security, the United States is better off because we allow immigration. I mean, Japan, by the end of the century, loses half its population. Okay, mm -hmm. so think about that. But anyway, when Social Security started in 1935, there were 45 uh, 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 donors, you know, 45 people working to every recipient. recipient yeah. That was three to one. <laughs> and then soon it's going to be two to one. So, you know, how, how is this going to happen? So uh, the entire planet's faced with it, and it's, and it's the idea of being able to provide people with, with income and that lasts as long as they do. Definitely. You heard about this issue right here. Now, click the links below, follow us, and find out how you can help make an impact to this pressing issue. Thank you, Joe. My pleasure.